Hi and welcome to RC Models and the third part of this series on converting the Bruder Cat Excavator to full radio control. In the last two parts we looked at firstly designing the linear actuator using 3D printer lead screws and secondly controlling it with a cheap speed controller with micro switch travel limiters. In this video we're going to sort out and install the drivetrain to the tracks don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and check out some of my other many RC videos. Let's get cracking with the build. So the first thing that I wanted to do was to take this off. I have already had it off once before but I ended up cutting myself so I'm going to try and do it in a more safe and reliable way. The base is held on with four tabs which are actually part of the yellow cab and they hook underneath a ring which is built into the bottom of this black base plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole basically between these square holes which is what you can put a screwdriver in to release it with so that we can see what's going on and it'll actually make parts of the build later easier I hope. I'll start by scoring out the area that I want to remove just using a piece of lead here as a straight line. Then I'm just going to go at it with a saw, just cut into each of the corners. Well suddenly everything's a bit easier to see in there. So we can see how we've got these four tabs going round and there's a ring going all the way around here in the back black plastic that these yellow tabs hook onto. So I don't think it's going to be too difficult to get it out without injury now. So I'm going to try just going round with this flat screwdriver. What I'm thinking is that if I just lever each piece back and then hold it under, there we go, it comes off easy as anything. It was certainly not like that the first time when I tried to do it. So this is the first time I'm really having a good look. I'll be sorting out the mechanism for turning it in the next video. It's time to think about how I'm going to power it. I bought this set of four motors for doing the trucks with, but I think that I might use two of them on this. If these work here, I might just order some more of them. They were not very expensive. Just to show you what's written on the motors, they're six volt and they're 200 RPM. So that's the gearbox reduction. The shafts look like they might be four millimeter. I'll have to check that and these are little one inch diameter motors. On the tracks you've got one end with a cog and the other end plane so obviously the motors are going to need to go at this end and the tracks are easy enough to get off. You can pull them off just by pulling like this. You can also do it by opening up the tracks but you could be very careful not to bend the plastic. I think that the tracks are a fairly cheap replacement part so I'm not worried about those at all. I could try taking all of this apart but I actually don't think that I need to and one of the things with the brooders is that the take apart usually provides additional challenges. So the next thing is to get these off. I suspect that these are the fairly thin 3mm shafts. If I can get these side cuts underneath it might just pull out, let's just see. certainly is. Well that was easier than I thought it would be and now time to figure out what to do next. So I'm going to want this mounted in there somehow. There's going to need to be a bunch of material here removed but actually leaving as much as possible in there in order to help support this area and to hold the motor. The depth of that lip is about two millimeters and if I was to use some two mil plastic card I could actually mount it in that hole so that it's kind of flush with the edge and checking the depth of this lip on the motor here that's also about two millimeters and the width of that collar is just a shade under seven millimeters. The diameter of the hole somewhere around 31 millimeters. So what I'm thinking is that if I take a two mil piece of plastic card, 
cut it round to the 31 millimeters with a seven millimeter hole in the middle for this and a couple of screw holes perhaps countersunk if I can find any which will fit that that will mount on here I'm going to need to trim out the material to make room for the motor and I should be able to glue the circle in there with what's left on these supporting members there and that should be that sorted out the other thing that I'm going to have to figure out is how to get the motor to attach to that I'm probably going to use a method similar to what I did on some of the other Bruder builds well on my first attempt it's probably hard to see this with the camera but that just isn't quite central and I wasn't happy so what I've done is I've made some new discs which again after a bit of sanding fit in perfectly and I think the problem was was that I was centering on where the compass had been to draw the circle but it didn't necessarily end up then being in the middle so so using a disassembled pin vise clamp actually drilling through with a three millimeter drill bit from the back here will absolutely guarantee alignment with the existing model and mean that when I'm cutting parts out of here and out of the back here I can do everything based on the center that is much better I'm glad I bothered to redo them now I'm hoping I can go through here fairly straight with the formula bit if I could I'll try and also go in with a 7mm bit so that I can put this flush. The idea being that I can push the motor in and accommodate the flange, like so, and then draw a line around it to use as a cutting guide. That can then be patiently dremeled. Right, so that's getting to be the right sort of shape. I think I'm going to continue with the file. At some point I might want to actually glue this part, but certainly not yet. Not until I've sorted out what I'm doing with the pivot turn. Just give it a quick test. That seems to be a perfect and quite a tight fit and it looks fairly straight as well. I just need to countersink these and then this is going to go on there like that. The countersunk screw is going to go in. I actually had to trim these down a little bit with the carbon blade on the Dremel and after some fettling of this with the file that will push in there and I think that this wants to go flush with the edge of the frame there that clicks in and a little bit of moving around until it looks straight in all the directions and I think that that's going to be quite a good mount for this obviously I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other side and what I'm going to do is when I'm happy with the position of this and I think I'll wait until I've tested it with the gears I'm then going to epoxy this in place so taking a nut which I think is an M6 but it's 10 millimeters across I'm going to want that to go on here just hit it with a hammer and then start the thread to get it flat. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to countersink this in a similar fashion to the way that I've done on some of the other models and for this this is going to want to be flush so you aren't going to want to go down an amazing depth but enough to make that flush. 
taking the large Stanley knife and the amount out is going to be at this widest point here. So I'm going to get that down a bit. That. Then move the nut around. That. that take it off and then in a similar fashion go down parallel with the shaft by about the same amount like so and then trim it out about the depth of the nut so try and estimate that and that nut once it's started get it fairly straight should literally just screw on it should be to screw on until it goes flush that seems to be fairly flush the next thing to do is to drill a two and a half millimeter hole in the nut tap it Then put the nut back on. It looks like it's about flush. Then slice off the excess. Like so. What you're then left with is a 3mm hole needing to accept a 4mm shaft. So that needs to be drilled out with a 4mm drill bit. Now I don't think it's strictly necessary to use the lathe to do this. But if you've got one I would use it. So I'm just slowly moving the 4mm drop in. Turning it by hand, I certainly wouldn't turn the lathe on. Right, I think that that's going to be more than enough. And then go in the side with a 2.5mm draw bit. And then taking a longish grub screw. clean any stuff out in there. Right, this is probably sticking out a bit further than I would want it to, although if it isn't going to run perfectly straight I would rather that there was a little gap in there. Let's just give it its first test. Yep, that is on camera. Okay, right. I would say that for the tolerances needed for this project, I think that that's going to be absolutely fine. Yep, I think I'm pleased with that. Let's just try it with the track because that might give us a better idea. Right, so the track's been reinstalled. That seems to work okay. Well, having got the nut set in a perfect place, I'm a bit concerned that with the wear and tear, and this is very soft plastic, that actually, first of all, that it's going to be easy for the wheel to come out of alignment. And secondly, that with the very soft plastic and the fact that I've made it thinner by drilling the 4mm hole and I've made holes in it, that it might just twist off. So, going to mix up some epoxy resin and I'm going to pour it into the two quarters that haven't got the grub screws. I know that the epoxy won't stick that well to this soft plastic but it's got nowhere to go and I'm just trying to use it as a filler. This might seem like slight overkill but I don't want to end up having to buy a whole new excavator just because the wheel's broken off. That seems pretty good. I don't want it proud so I'll just wipe some off the top. I suppose it doesn't do any harm just to pour it down the other holes but make sure that I don't go as deep as the grub screws. Then leave that to set for a few minutes. I feel a lot more confident 
that the gear wheel is not going to give me trouble. Obviously I had to make sure before I did all of this that everything was in perfect alignment because it will not move around now. Right now just before it all sets rock hard I'm going to put the wheel back on just raising it slightly so that nothing's under any strain. And you can probably see that I've got it much closer than I did last night. I actually trimmed it all down a bit. It's that. And I'll just check that it's going round straight. That's okay. There is a slight wobble, but I don't think it's going to be enough to be any problem. What I did find was when I tested the tracks, you want you actually want a minimal distance here obviously you don't want it touching but somewhere around the one millimeter mark is ideal otherwise the track makes a lot of noise i need to do the same to the other side now so that's both of these done and i just want to give it a quick test with the 3.7 volt battery that all seems good the next thing to do is to glue them in place. Now I'm only going to want to glue around this edge here, the front here, because this part of the back may need to come off later down the track. And the only way to get it straight in here is to glue it in and put the wheel on to make sure that everything's aligned. I'm going to use the Evo Stick Express because whilst it dries fairly quickly in the first place it dries to a rubbery kind of consistency which actually gives you plenty of working time when it does dry it dries very very strong which is, which is also good so I'm going to be going all the way around this inside edge Obviously I don't really want to glue the motor in place, so I'm not going too mad with it. It's that. Pushing the motor, like so. Push this fully on. Do up both grub screws. and then get it where I want it. So I'm really wanting the wheel to be as close as possible to here, but without it actually touching. And that seems pretty good to me. I'll leave that to dry before I do the other side. Apologies for the noise, um, the neighbours seem to be having their trees trimmed. I guess I'll be glad if it gets really windy. Right, so motors are now installed and I put some black insulation tape around just to tidy things up and hold the wires. Temporarily I've put a sabre tooth twin speed controller and just stuck it on here and I'm using another Spectrum compatible receiver. This is probably the one that I'm going to use in this model. It's got six channels, which is plenty for doing an excavator with. I'll probably save the Lemon 10 channel receiver for something which actually needs that many channels. 
Before going any further, I wanted to put this base through its paces. The first test is low speed maneuverability. I think it passed that test with fine colours. One of the problems I first encountered with the hobby engine was actually it only went full speed on either track and that made it really difficult to manoeuvre around or to get up ramps onto the back of a low loader for instance. Next test, uneven ground. Again, past, climbing. That was actually quite impressive. Obstacle. Yep, and then last but not least, heavy load. Okay, so I think that that's about it for this video. In terms of what's coming up next time, I'm going to be figuring out how to get the body turning on the base, how I'm going to manage continuous rotation without the wires all getting twisted up. Don't forget to keep the comments, thumbs up and subscriptions coming. And until the next time, thank you very much for watching.